Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Craftsman S165 chainsaw. Customer complaint is, well, he doesn't really have a complaint. He said he's got a limb down and he's got to go cut it up and he wanted us to look the saw over before he went out on his mission. So he didn't ask for a full tune-up. He just wanted us to make sure that when he got home with the saw, it was going to start up and he could do his job. And he, uh, you know, wasn't looking to spend a whole lot of money. He just doesn't know how to do maintenance, so we're looking it over. Well, first things first, that air filter looks pretty good. So for a guy that doesn't do maintenance, he's doing all right. I want to look into the cylinder and make sure that there's no scoring in the cylinder. Make sure that uh, this saw's got some life left in it. We'll get our handy dandy flashlight out and take a look inside. Roll the piston down to the bottom and the main place I'm looking is above the exhaust port. But I'm looking at the whole cylinder, at least everything I can see. If there's no vertical lines in it and it's clean and shiny or maybe even has crosshatch marks in it yet then I know we're all right so we got a new spark plug in here we'll get our spark plug boot sealed down on this style craftsman saw you want to be really careful about this air filter I have had a couple of these saws come through already so that air filter is not sealed down and the uh, elbow there that the filter sits on that intake uh, elbow has just been full of dirt well you know where that dirt went it went right into the engine so we're going to split this filter in half and take a look at it it just makes it easy to blow this nylon mesh out make it clean and it's already really clean, so no big deal. So we got it snapped back together, and there's this rubber gasket here. I'm going to put the gasket into the air filter, because if you leave it on top of the elbow, then, you know, it could shift a little bit while you're putting that filter on there. I mean, you see how tight a fit it is in the in the filter. So if we get it in the filter first, we know it's going to line up with the uh, intake elbow. And this is a tight fit. I mean, what a pain in the butt, right? Now where's the gasket? It's stuck down there again. We're going to try it the other way. This time we're only putting the bottom half on, so we'll be able to see if that gasket moved or not. Yeah, it looks like it's sitting where it's supposed to be. This is way more of a pain in the butt than it should be. And pretty much that's what this video is about, is that damn air filter. We have had, like I said, more than one come through where that gasket has been cranked off to the side and it sucked a bunch of dirt in. Some of them saws were ruined. I think we even got one replaced under warranty. So we don't know how old his fuel is. We suspect it's old. It didn't smell great. And the way the customer was talking when he brought in the saw, you know, I think he used it, put it in the shed, and that may have been months ago, and now he needs it again. So I want to pressure test the fuel system for checking the integrity of the line and the carburetor. Make sure it's sealed up. And it looks like, is it holding? It must have been holding. Because we're putting a filter back on it. Okay. 
We want to get that filter so it's laying in the bottom of the fuel tank. We got some fresh 50 to 1 mix in here. Now there's a lot of other things we could have looked at. We could have pulled the starter off and checked the ignition module air gap. That would have been part of a full tune-up. But, um, you know, the, the customer didn't really want us going that deep into it. He just wanted to make sure it was ready to go. And you can see, by the way, the chain is hanging there. This thing's not ready to go. You're going to have to loosen the tension on the chain a little bit. I don't know why we had to do that as much slack as was in there, but that's what it took to get the cover off. Off comes the bar. And anytime I pull a bar off, I like to look at the oil feed hole and see if it was feeding oil to the chain or if it's plugged up. All right, we blew the debris out of the uh, clutch area on the cover and on the chainsaw. I'm having some technical difficulties with my toolbox there. So I want to remove this clutch. On this style clutch, the center hub, that uh, three-sided hub, it's just um, pushed into the center uh, how do I explain it? Just watch here once. When I set this on the bench, I'll push that piece back down. When you take this off of here, you could actually spin that whole piece right out, and then the whole clutch would fall apart. So that's something to be careful of if you're removing this style clutch. Now, the whole reason we pulled the clutch off was to grease this needle bearing. Sure, we're doing an inspection, uh, but it was the needle bearing that was the reason we took it apart. The clutch drum sprocket, you know, we put an eyeball on that and make sure that it's decent. That piece right there. The teeth on there look nice and squared up. There's no grooves in it. And then when you're spinning this clutch back on, there's no worries as far as anything coming apart. I like to pull the cord out a little bit so that uh, I'm not bottoming out the starter mechanism when I do that. We're going to blow some debris out of the bar, make sure that the, the rail that the chain rides in is clean. We're making sure that the oil feed hole in the bar is clean and oil can pass through it. And we're just kind of inspecting it for wear. We could put a gauge on that bar and make sure that the groove is still uh, the 50 thousandths that it's supposed to be, or if it's worn out. And we're going to have to sharpen this chain, but we will fire this up and make sure it runs. So that's all I got for you on the Craftsman S165 chains uh, lookover. Thanks for watching. Later.